community is such a big word because we think of community as being face to face. Well, you know what? Podcasting is a form of community as well. Arrow.net, A R R O E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Elizabeth Fee. I'm doing well. Thank you. Such a serious subject. And, and, and with that thought, I also have to plant in, inside our hearts, you know, how to survive middle school, not just for students, but for teachers as well. Mm, yes, and parents. <laughs> middle school is um, often to be survived, as you may remember. <laughs> so true. And, you know, I, I've been that, that mobile entertainer, that DJ that goes to these middle school dances. I know how these kids are. I know what they want to release and everything like that. But my wife is a teacher. So, I mean, this this book is so perfectly in tune with where we are and we need leadership like this book. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I happen to agree. The, the, the learning loss from the pandemic. My, my wife had, she, to this day, she's got a studio here in the house where, where she communicates with students and stuff like that. But the thing is, though, is that the learning loss is just, people don't want to talk about it, but you are bravely walking forward. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a little scary. Um, and at our school, you know, we're seeing it firsthand. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of hope because um, kids are resilient. That's one thing um, I've learned through these years of being a school leader at this time and also an author for kids. Um, they'll, they'll recover from this, but um, it will take time. And I do think, I agree, we have to be realistic with um, where we are right now and, and not ignore the fact that they've undergone trauma. They've undergone just a huge loss um, to their schooling. And we got to all get on board and, and try to fix this. One of the greatest things about how to survive middle school is the fact that you, that, that you, everybody that came together did so in a way of providing study guides. Because so many times parents will go, ah, I don't know. I, I, I was in school a long time ago. Right. Right. Um, well said. And I think, you know, parents um, suffered as much as their kids trying to be teachers at home. I mean, <laughs> You know, they're not trained to do this. The, um, the, this was this was never what they intended, and I, I really respect what parents tried to do um, and what they had to do during those days. Um, and the nice thing about these books is that um, we we they're written by educators, mm-hmm. um, so that um, they're they're incorporating not only the content that middle schoolers need. But the thinking skills that are part of the way, you know, we teach now, it's part of what's going on inside of schools, in the best schools. And so we've incorporated the very best of the Common Core and made it accessible and repeated and attractive to the kids as they move through all of the books in the series. So I feel very excited about that because parents are not teachers. But if they can turn their kids on to these books and even engage with them with the books, um, I, I feel very confident that the kids will be getting, again, not only the facts and stuff that they need to learn, but um, they'll be thinking. And as it says, they might just be smarter than their parents. And they love that. <laughs> well, see, yeah, because that, that, that's what they want. <laughs> that's got to be the positive in all of this, in the way that, because so many times I pull the lens back to figure out, okay, what are we supposed to be learning from this? And and when you get a book like How How to Survive Middle School, it, it really, it, you're pulling the bandage off and you're saying, give that baby some air because we need to physically build bridges over this gap that we have. We've got to get back into the plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also what I like about the books um, is that we're engaging kids in this in, um, you know, to give them agency, right? It's that one of the subtitles is a do-it-yourself guide. I mean, that's what middle school kids are about, right? Like, I don't need my parents anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't think parents can read the book along with them. But, you know, like, you are going to do this. You can do this. It's up to you to read this book. It's up to you to try to answer the questions that are throughout or to look at the icons that are reminding you to stop and think. 
that's my hope is that kids will grab this and they'll be empowered by it. As as a parent and as a grandparent, I, 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 I love this book in the way that it, it really gets kids engaged in why they need to learn because we, we are very quickly mm-hmm. moving into this metaverse generation where they're virtually they're going to be living mm-hmm. in a second world. I, I can't I can't believe that. And and I want I, I mean I mean you've got five core middle school subjects featured inside this book. They need to plant their thoughts into mm-hmm. into these pages. Yeah, I mean the future's happening fast, right? You know, it's we're we're living it right now. And so um I think, you know, this idea that like education is somehow stagnant and that mm-hmm. there's like a, you know, a set of things that year after year kids learn, like, you know, we know that's not accurate, as you point out. So, that, again, you know, that's why we want kids to be excited about learning and to have tools that make them better learners and better processors of the overabundance of information that comes at them. You're a history teacher. History is part of uh, of what you put into this book and stuff like that. History is changing as quickly mm-hmm. as well. And and there are many times I want to sit down mm-hmm. with with a middle schooler and say, that, yes, there is a war in Ukraine. But do you realize what happened yeah. in 2014? You need to know your history. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you know, that's a theme that they'll take away from, from my book is that, you know, there are these themes that are repeated in history and you know i make a joke about it like you know human beings sometimes have to keep learning the same lesson over and over again you know and and sometimes we get smarter for a while and then we're not and you know we're screwing up all the time and yet um there's a lot of heroism in history and there's inspiration that kids can take from the pages and you know we we want kids to see themselves in these stories of history and to to realize that it it's a fabulous story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not boring. It's, <laughs> it's it's incredible. It's the greatest adventure there ever was, um, and we can never tell it completely. But we we really tried to pull out the things we feel are most important, and also you know engaging for this age group. And what, what's so fascinating about history, and, and first of all, I love history, but, but it's, it's so amazing that things that happen in real life usually end up in a movie, but, but it may not be exactly like what happened in history, but you're going to go, oh my God, this, this happened mm-hmm. at a different time, and, and they're pulling from that history mm. to make this movie. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a great drama yeah. that... Um, <laughs> The book addresses from the beginning of the beginnings of civilization all the way up until the pandemic. Uh, of course, we weren't able to treat it completely, but um, I do hope that like kids will recognize that um, the world is very, very, very big <laughs> and very old. And I think in the U.S. sometimes um, we focus a lot on American history, and we have a wonderful book in the series about that. Um, but to see beyond our borders and to be able to see history holistically and then think for yourself about the really big questions that we face as humans, um, I know that's lofty, but that is really my hope. For, for kids reading this book. How were you able to put it into what I call street speak? Because, I mean, so many times when, when you when you <laughs> share a book like this with, with students, they go, oh, man. But yet you, you do it in a way that's inviting and not, you know, a moment of pushing away. Oh, thank you. That, that is so what I wanted to do. Um, tone matters, especially with this age group. So, you know, I think what I did was... Um, you know, I was a teacher for many years and I just kind of put on my teacher voice and I, I wrote it imagining I was speaking to a sixth or seventh or eighth grader. Um, I, I wanted them to be engaged not only by the content, not only by the illustrations, but also by the voice that was there guiding them and saying, hey, you got this. Mm-hmm. And now let's check this out. And did you ever think about this? And then, you know, a little bit of humor in there too. So, you know, <laughs> I, I do think um, it helps a lot being a teacher and then just, you know, enjoying the writing of it and, and letting it be playful at times. You know, Elizabeth, people are going to grab this book. These teachers are going to grab it and they're going to use it as, as a study guide. Plus, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of schools outside uh, the, the, the normal education that are going to use this as a tool as well when they do their tutoring. 
Yes, um, I, I do think it'll reach those folks, and um, it's badly needed. I mean, there are wonderful resources out there, but I, I think, you know, Random House thought of a way to do something new and do something super engaging, and, you know, we had no idea it was going to land, you know, during the pandemic. The pandemic hadn't happened when they started thinking about this, so I um, I'm really happy that it's coming out now and that, you know, it can help kids when they need it most. Where, where can they go to find out more about you, Elizabeth, and, and to find out more about this book and stuff like that? Because, I mean, listeners are in their moment of now, but, but they're going to say, now, what was I listening to again? And so they, they need a place to go. Right. Well, um, the books are sold widely, right? I mean, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't take much to find where... Um, these books could be located. Um, we, you know, it's published by Random House Children's Books, and um, you know, all of the major book suppliers are carrying it right now. Um, so I have a feeling that it's going to be at people's fingertips. <laughs> if they Google it or walk into their bookstore, they can certainly order it or find it right there. Man, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, w- I would sell it at Home Depot because, you know, that's where moms and dads are. And they're going to go, what? I can build my student with my house? <laughs> that was a great idea. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure about that one. But um, <laughs> let's hope it's a household object, right? Have- because homes still need paper books in them. You bet, you bet. Um, get the kids off the screen time all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future, Elizabeth. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, terrific. I would love to. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today, okay? All righty. <laughs> I'm sure you will be too.